Yo, what's going on everybody? Therapy Wolfie here. Uh, so today's video is gonna feature a game that I've been dying to get my hands on called Viscounts of the West Kingdom, made by Garfield Games. Uh, this game was just recently successfully kickstarted. Congratulations to uh, Garfield Games. And hopefully it'll be available to, available to us sometime in December. Don't forget guys, if you're enjoying this content, like and subscribe to this video. I also stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. I always love feedback and interacting with you guys in the comments section down below. Your support really means the world to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. So with that being said, this video will provide you with a little rundown of the rules provided by our friend from Overboard Games. Let's just jump right into it and see how this game's played. All right, so uh, Viscounts of the West Kingdom is a not a rondelle game. Um, a, it's a card drafting action to action movement game, really, with a uh, unique central point that's going to be a strategy within the game. Uh, I say not a rondelle because it is classified as a rondelle in the game, uh, in the mechanics, but if anything, it's, it's really not because you're not skipping anything. There is, in a normal rondelle, you would normally have to pick an action to then skip something, and you wouldn't get that action back. Within this game, you can. You can go where... There's arrows within the game you can find, and you're not really skipping actions. You can choose what you want to do, as long as you have the desired resources. Uh, so, going into that, we are going to be playing until one of these decks are empty. Um, you can see that there are going to be um, a set number of cards per player. So there's going to be 16 for a free player game, and there's going to be 16 debts as well, uh, 15 debts. And the way this is going to work is um, um, you're going to play until one of these decks runs out, and the scoring will be based off the side that is emptied. So debts the debts are emptied, you will score based on flipped deeds. If the deeds are empty, you'll score based on flip debts. Um, among other things as well, but that's just to be aware of how Majority. the scoring will go. Yeah, so if you have the motion of 12, 8, and 4. Uh, you can still gain deeds and debts if they run out during, during the end phase of the game, but just be aware, once these are empty, these are out. And by the way, we have 15 debts, not 16. There's one less debt and one more deed. Ah. Why? Don't know. Yeah. Sure, there's a, sure there's a balance, balance. for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in your game, in the game, you're going to have a hand of... Sorry, I'm so used to being yellow. Uh, you're going to have a hand of three cards. Uh, so, and what's going to happen is on your turn, you're going sorry to about that, guys. drop off the last card of your um, row. Activate any of its drop-off abilities, which you can see here with an X symbol, um, and then you would play a new card. Um, the cards are going to have a couple symbols you do want to be aware of. The symbol is going to be um, the movement of the Viscount. So this will allow you to move your Viscount um, one or two spaces, and you can spend more money per one silver to move your Viscount extra additional spaces. Is it up to two spaces or no? It's minimum. It's you minimum must move that. Right. You must okay. move two. Yeah. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Um, and then you can then I'll just go through it basically. So then that's your viscount movement. Then you can activate the it looks like a phone button, but it is in fact just activating a card on the side, which is the board. So you're on this board, for example. You can use it's. So it's got a play button and a plus button so this would count you could discard this card from the game and use that ability which would be discarding a card from your top of your deck or your dis or your hand you yeah. when you buy it as well you would do the same thing as well then you would do the um one of these actions so you've got uh up on buying building um, has a silence. noble slash castle action and um, manuscript that. action. So, uh, where I, what, what this basically is, before I go into those, I want to make you aware, when you discard these cards, you have, you'll also gain the, the acquired icons. 
Um, however, you can only discard the card if you're doing one of those actions. So if I'm doing a build action, I can't discard this card because it hasn't got a building icon, which would be a hammer symbol. However, if I was doing a trade, I could obviously discard it because it's got a trade symbol along with, if I was here, it's got a noble icon so I can do the castle action. Does that make sense? Yes. Another way to put it is th this uh, section here with the play button and the discarding of that is in congruence with one of these four actions. This, yeah. These five icons are effectively one set. Correct. You can choose two, three, four, or five, and mm -hmm. if they match the thing in this spot, then you would do with that as well. You're only doing one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can basically just, yeah. So if you want to do the build action, you couldn't discard this card because it doesn't have any build icons. Uh, so what would happen then is you would also have to look at what icons you have on your card, on your board and your cards. So in a situation, I would have two icons. I have two blue and two blue here, which would then indicate I could spend those four blue and potentially discard the card to get a fifth blue to gain five money. Again, I can spend silver to have extra bags. And that's because uh, if you look at the silver right here, blue action. Yeah, it has the silver icon as well. Yes. Uh, and you can sort of see, like, with the build and the nobles and the um, manuscripts, they all have their respective resources as well. So building requires stone. Um, well, technically, it doesn't require stone. It can be stone can be used as a build act as a build icon. Um, and when you build, you have to have a look at which one you want to build. Um, their cost is on the left hand side, so five, seven, and three. And their respective um, points are going to give you, it's going to be 4, 9, and 15. So if you put all three out, you would get 15 points. And the bonuses, as you can see, are all going to relate to the, to the action below it. So right. this one is going to allow you to move 0 or plus 1 extra to your Viscount. All your cards to discard are going to be 1. So when you discard a card, it forgets. Um, you have to pay the respected cost as well. These ones just give you more icons. This one is whenever you buy a card, you can discard a card from your deck or your hand. This one is if you have no criminals on your board, your virtue goes down one, which I'll explain later. And this is a plus one hand limit. Right. Then you would then look at your collision. So this is a collide collision phase. Is whenever if whenever you get this phase and they have touched, you would get a respected thing on the top. So you would gain two money, a debt and a deed, and everyone else would get the bottom effect. So this one, for example, is a rearrange. You can only rearrange as long as there's more than one card on the board. So you can't just rearrange this card to be at the back now. <laughs> <laughs> These ones are the corruption symbols. Um, so it's one or more corrupt symbols. So if I have the thief on the board and someone else collided, I would move my corruption marker up. Same for the same. If I had no criminals on the board and someone collided and they were at this point, they would go down one. Does that make sense? Yes. And also, yes. okay, yes, that's correct. Yeah. And then you draw back up to your hand limit, which would be free. And then you repeat. Um, I do then. So that's basically how the basically the functions of turns will go. I explained um, how to do a merchant action, but then I'll explain how to do the build and noble now. Can I interrupt so you building... for one one sec, overboard? Sure. Real quick. So when you're doing one of these merchant actions, do you have to be in that particular area? Correct. correct? Okay. You can only do yeah. merchant actions in the outer spots on the board where the blue bags are. Yeah, outer right. spots okay. are bags and build. Inside spots are for the manuscripts and castles. So okay. I went through building. Uh, whenever you build, you will gain the respected thing. So if I built this workshop here, I would gain one ink well. And if, for whatever reason, I built again on a future turn, you can only build once per turn, um, I would gain the link of two money. Right. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to do this. Someone else could help you out and put this here and you would both benefit from the two money right so if it's just you you're getting the one but if it's two different people you're each getting it correct yeah and if you have both of them you only trigger it once yourself you never get more than correct gotcha 
Um, and then, so that's your build, that's your merchant, and the castle. So this is the probably the most unique part of the uh, game, is this castle part. So a castle's going to require workers. So on your player board... You... Yeah? I was going to give you some examples if you wanted. This is a great example, as you can see here, we have a kilometer and about eight or so <laughs> workers in one section. They overlap in a matter like this, and then within the mechanics of the game, no. Um, I, I meant I was going to give you some examples like this. <laughs> um, that would be a great game, just like, just chuck a bunch of just, workers just on the board. Just throwing them all over the place, right? Yeah, that's how it yeah. works, yeah. right? Yeah, that's, that's how we play most of our games when we play live. <laughs> all right so you can see on your left hand board um i'm not sure where your camera is pointing are you just looking at everyone's board are you i'm just doing it on mine uh, i'm i'm, so, yeah, I'm uh, focusing in on yours so you sweet can, you can use so you yours can... as the example <coughs> sorry i got a bit <clears throat> so you have your noble symbols here this is basically saying if you have a noble symbol it will relate to this so one noble symbol allows you to put one worker in the location where your viscount is so, in this situation, so nice. it would go on to here. If you, the, the maximum you can put down is four workers in a spot, and it would be eight gold. Eight gold symbols. So that can be a mixture of the noble icon and gold resource. All right, um, can you, can you re-explain that? I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, yeah, so, 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 if you have, for example, a noble symbol, right. um, these will relate to putting workers within the castle. Okay. Noble symbols can be in gold isn't equivalent to a noble symbol. So if I have no noble, I still have one gold, which is one noble symbol. Okay. I think it's the Ferdelis is the correct correct uh, shape of the thing. So the Ferdelis symbol will basically dictate how many workers I can stick into the castle spot where I am. Okay. Um, once you acquire um, three workers of your color within the um, respectable spot, um, they will split. They will, um, one will go left, one will go right, and one will go forwards. You'll then um, keep going until every basically first tier has been resolved, and then you would resolve to tier two. And as this, free, as this one was in here, this would allow me to flip a deed or a debt. Um, this That's one when about... it goes into the middle, just uh, to yeah. the middle section. When it goes into the middle, when it goes into there, so this one allows me to do an extra movement of tier one or gold. This one gives me a stone and an inkwell. This one gives me two virtue, and this one is a trash or a buy a card with no cost involved. When you have free, so once that would happen, you would then do the, tier two. So one of these would just go in. There is no spitting, the, as there is no the arrows available, the and the middle great. point would then gain the um, any resource of your choice, and you would also gain the castle leader because you are now the leader of the castle with the most workers within the middle. This one give you five points in the game plus one hand hand limit, so you would start the game with three, and you could get maximum of five cards in your hand because if you got your workshop as well that would give you plus one and then that card would give you plus one as well this card can move around so if whatever reason green end up putting two workers in here at one point somehow that card would then be passed on to green they have to overtake the uh, the other person Correct. They, don't, they don't take it as, as a tie just as if they get more than that yeah. right. longest version mm. that's correct and then you also got to see how manuscripts work. So that's basically how the castle will work. Oh, one more thing within the castle. If there are ever four or more of one... No, not one colour. If there's just four or more in quantity-wise within a space, um, you have to remove one. And it's up to you what you choose, but you need to be aware. If I just give you one of these player cards here. Um, when you remove cards from the game... Cards. When you remove workers from the game, the, the level basically gives them bonuses. So removing a worker from a tier 1 gives that player 2 coins. Tier 2, virtue and a resource. And then tier 3, well, you don't really. You can never remove You them. can't remove somebody from the middle tier. No. And this also shows you what they're worth at the end of the game if they are there. That is correct. So these are 1, 2, and 3. So you can get a maximum, I think it's around 60 points, I think it is, within the workers, because you've got 20 workers in your bag, and I think it's a total of 60 or something. 
How, how do we know where the, do they just, does everybody start in a different area with the, your player card? No, no, we no. don't have any until we do the floater list. This was so examples. You, so you've got this whole outside section, which will represent each of the first tier quadrants. And that's where you would start when you would put your workers in. Gotcha. And the active player chooses whose worker gets destroyed from the one Correct. before. Right. You could choose your own to get this, or you could choose other people's to, you know, get, let them get the bonus, and then they, uh, you, but you have reasons that you want to uh, ascend to the castle. Yes. There's no, there's not often a reason you would remove your worker unless you unless really needed the money. Or something. Yeah. But, yeah. And that is how you pretty much play the game. You got, oh, and the manuscripts as well. They're very simply, if you are one of the inside spaces, you check the manuscript cost. And that is going to be the amount of cross symbols. So if I find myself a card, there we go. Pick up the abbot. He has a one cross symbol. And an inkwell will also count as a cross symbol. Once you achieve the uh, desired cost, you would spend that resource and or not spend the resource if you have the right amount of icons um, to then gain the manuscript and the bonus as well. As you can see, these have lightning symbols, so these will be instant effects. There will also be ribbon symbols as well, which will count as victory points at the end. Now you can yep. also you can also buy your town folk, correct? Yeah, that, correct. That... Go ahead. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that was just during this phase. So once you've done your main action, one of the four, you then buy. You can buy a card with the correct cost involved. Only the one in the hex or the whatever you call it, the wedge that you're. Yes. Yes. Right, the right. one part of the pentagon. Now, <laughs> whenever let's say I I built up on and hit this icon, which lets you buy any one for free, does it only mean this one is still, or does that mean anyone? Can, anyone. That's what I thought. Just like here as well, it's, it doesn't. It's not just triggering through only into this guy. This icon means anyone anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Got it. Oh, that's nice. Because. Because uh, people who aren't who miss the setup or the teach, um, the physical game when you do set up the tape, these wedges are randomized and the castle's uh, rotation is randomized. So you might not notice it when you're oh, playing it. In, when you yeah, you might not notice it when you're playing TTS because it's set up. But that's right. what you would do physically. So there's right. a lot of replayability on how you're going to be orientating your workers and the benefits within that. Yep. A uh, couple things I would mention. Did you just, uh, I, I'm, but I'm sorry. Continue if, you, if you're. Um, I guess I was just going to finish off. Um, corruption symbols are wild symbols. That was one of them. Yep. Uh, whenever you put a board, whenever you place a corruption thing on the board, you see how many corruption symbols you have, and you would gain that much corruption. It's the amount of corruption symbols. So if this was, well, basically if this was like. But then it also provides you, know, you with the. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. right. I'll reset it anyway. Yeah. Um, this would then be free corruption. So one, two, three. And again, if somehow this was going to be a cause of collision, you would resolve that during the collision phase. Uh, yep. And when they collide, they are going to move together. Anytime you move anything anywhere, until yes. you resolve your your own. That is correct. Yeah. Um. And I think you just mentioned it. Those purples are wilds for anything. So you could dismiss this guy, for example, when doing any of the four actions on this wedge. Absolutely. To aim to uh, uh, in strength. Yep. You also got to be aware that when you shuffle your deck, if you have one or more uh, criminal on your board, your corruption will go up. If you have none, your virtue goes up or down, depending on how you view it. I guess it's down. It's gonna rough, so yeah, it's going to be it's a rough down. first playthrough for me. <laughs> and yeah, It'll be that fun, is but... pretty much how you play Viscounts of the Viscounts of much. the West Kingdom. <clears throat> a couple of things I would want to mention is uh, so when you're making a building, yeah. you can choose any one of these nine buildings the first time okay. you're making a building. So you you don't have to go left or right or anything like that. You're, you're choosing one of these three buildings will cost you seven. For example, the three guild halls. Yeah. But the one you choose is the one that you're basically focusing on. Probably it's you're choosing, mm -hmm. and then it's worth however many points is however many that you're off your board at the end of the game. But yes. it doesn't matter what order you do them, just just that's clear. Yeah. Um, and then you score again would based on your sorry. Go ahead. 
uh, all other things. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the I will also say that the these things that you're collecting, these um, uh, what we call it? Uh, uh, scrolls. Yeah. The know, manuscripts. Look, manuscripts. Will, you. Yep. If you, if you get three of the same color one, so the first person to get three blue ones, for example, and there's you know, there's two blue ones by random, I think I saw Oop, like one, sorry. two, or we'll re-randomize the second. Would you you would just collect this, which would give you a, an ongoing effect of permanent two trade, as well as three points. And these you you do not lose. It's just it's first come first serve. Yeah. Uh, first person to get three of them. However, you're going for set collection for uh, end game scoring, which is shown here as well. So the different color borders. So, so if you, you had one of each. Yep. If you had all four, this would be three. Uh, this would be three different colors. That would be worth nine points at the end of the game. Yep. And you can create multiple sets. Absolutely. Uh, uh, it's very unlikely you'll get more than one set, if anything. Oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> but you can try. Um, <laughs> you can. Oh, I will be want to make you aware. A debt indeed has two sides. This one, when you get a debt, it will give you minus two. Flip it over, gives you a resource. The deeds will always give you one point, and then flipped over, give you three. Right. Virtuous players want go get deeds. Debt players get that. Yeah. yeah. But you would get a lot more money when you take that and whatever. Yeah. When you and collide then, over there. And then that's pretty much it. So you get scoring based on your buildings. You score based on the workers and castles. Sets. Score. For for complete no, no. sets is the yeah yeah per per group. Right. Yeah, so, so if I have like, one building out worth two, four complete sets is the if you do all three, I get nine points for all three of these. Oh, Shem was mentioning that four complete sets is the, is the record so far. Four complete sets? Wow. Four complete sets. You must go so. really hard on your manuscripts to really... Oh, for this. Wow. That's wow. a lot. That's 64 <laughs> points right there. That sounds like it's a That's... lot. And if you were playing this, by the way, guys, if you're, learning, if you're decided to learn from this video, which would be awesome, if you in a game of less than three players, the middle eight victory points is ignored on poverty and prosperity cards. Yep, twelve and four. But also, one thing to mention is you need to have at least one in order to achieve any points on end, on either of these ends, yes. as well Absolutely. as both of them can trigger in the same game. Mm -hmm. If the, if we empty this deck and then in that final round we also empty this deck, then both of them will trigger their end game bonus, which will be interesting. And that's a wrap, guys. So that's the uh, quick rundown of the rules for Viscounts of the West Kingdom. We went on to play the game, and I got to tell you, it was a ton of fun. Um, again, a huge thank you to Overboard Games for all that you did teaching us, and thank you Easy Flyer for uh, helping out as well. I, I really enjoyed playing with you guys. I hope this content was helpful for you all, and I look forward to interacting with you all soon.